So hello guys, and welcome to another video. And Nintendo has been doing something pretty weird lately. So a couple days ago, they added the first three Starfy games on Nintendo Switch Online. And this was the first time they were released outside of Japan ever, which was really cool that we got access to these games. But there was one pretty big catch. They weren't translated at all. They still are in their original Japanese state and everything. So there is quite a lot missing from these games if you're playing it with knowing an, any other language other than Japanese. Which is kind of concerning for a few different reasons that I'll get into, especially that we have to pay a premium for this service. But first, I want to talk about why translations are important. Because... Even if there's a game that doesn't really require a lot of dialogue, it still provides context in the game if there's dialogue, and it still kind of gives you an idea of what you're doing, because there's still things like tutorials for certain games, for like puzzle games, it kind of helps you understand like the menu and various components of the game. So even some games that are technically playable without knowing Japanese, it still would be important to get a translation, because a lot of people would be going into these games from a very casual perspective and wouldn't really know what's going on, even in some of these games that are completely playable without knowing Japanese, like Kirby Superstar Stacker or Panel Day Pun, for example. It's still going to be really confusing for a lot of people, like a lot of Nintendo's target audience. So that is partially why it's concerning and kind of baffling that Nintendo hasn't been putting in the effort to translate these games. So, so far, there are actually at least 15 games on Nintendo Switch Online that haven't been translated, just like straight up like ported with the original versions of the game. There might be a few more that I haven't found, but I'll go through the list of the ones, so my apologies if I pronounce anything wrong because the titles weren't translated as well, but the first three Starfy games, Mystery of Atlantis, Marusame Castle, Downtown Neketsu, March Super Awesome Field Day, Ninja Jaja Marukun, Joy Mac Fight, Diva Story 6, Wrecking Crew 98, Kirby Superstar Stacker, Panel Day Pawn, Mario Super Pacross, Psycho Dream, and Super Poyo Poyo 2. So all of those games haven't been translated. And a lot of these games don't even require much translation at all. Like a lot of these games on the based NSO, it wouldn't really require too many resources. So I don't know why they just aren't doing it. Like, things for, like, Panel Day Pawn or Kirby Superstar Stacker, that wouldn't really take that much effort. It would, like, I feel like it would definitely be covered by the revenue of, like, the base NSO that has the NES and SNES games. Like, I don't think they would lose on that. I think they would still profit from NSO while translating some of these games. So, I don't know why they just aren't doing it. Like, it would be a perfect incentive for Nintendo Switch Online as well. Like, even kind of going over, like, um, some fans who were, like, comparing it to Virtual Console. This would definitely be kind of an upgrade to that if they were actually translating a lot of these games. So, it, it's just kind of weird. And another thing that's even more baffling is the Starfy games. Because they are on the expansion pack, the premium service that costs $50 a year, and they haven't translated them at all. Like, since they are charging a premium for this service, I don't know why they just aren't taking the extra step to translate these. And I don't think it requires that much effort for the Starfy games either. I mean, they do have a fair bit of dialogue. But it's not on the level of something like Mother 3 or like some of the older Fire Emblem games or any other like untranslated Nintendo RPG. Like these are still platformers, so they don't have like a ton of dialogue going on. 
So, I don't know why they just didn't take that extra step for the $50 tier. Like, they are treating these in the exact same way as all of the other untranslated games on the base service of NSO. Which is just really weird when you think about it. And it's just kind of weird as well, because they are technically going out of their way to acknowledge these and add these games to the service because they did have like a really cool like little animated trailer for like Starfy and everything. I think that was like really cool how they like made it and everything. They, they put like a, a little bit of production value into these trailers, but they aren't taking that extra step to actually translate these games. It's just so weird. And like it's their, this is like their first time acknowledging Starfy and like 15 years in North America, and they're still, like, just not doing anything. They're just dumping them on to the service. I mean, I'm glad they are here in the first place, but it, it's still just really odd how they've been handling this. I actually kind of liked the Japanese games at first, like, when they were first being added to the service, like, a few years ago. I think they started adding them, like, probably around, like, four or five years ago. But they were really just like puzzle games like Panel Day Pond and like Mario Super Pacross and things like that. I was like, eh, eh, it doesn't really matter that much. They're just adding these as like little bonuses. But now we're getting to the point where they're like full titles taking up a full month of NSO, like the Starfy games that are like just a straight up full release kind of taking their place for like another game. And that's where it's starting to become a problem here. So, I just think it's kind of odd that they're not doing anything at all. And what's even more baffling about this is that Nintendo knows they're untranslated. And they're even telling us they're untranslated. Like, they've acknowledged it multiple times if you look at the descriptions of the NES games. Because they say these have never been translated into English because they were Japanese exclusive before this. Like, what is... What is even the point? Like, at that point. If they're literally telling us these aren't translated, and they're like, oh, just because they were Japanese exclusive before, that doesn't mean they have to be untranslated on this service. They could just translate them. I, the, like, the fact that they were Japanese exclusive before and that they were only releasing in North America or Europe for the first time, that doesn't give them the excuse to not translate these. It's just baffling that they even make that statement. Like, just not say, don't say that at all if they know, like, that this is, like, kind of a weird thing here. But I think there's some solutions to this. I feel like they could be doing something else because Nintendo has translated games before and they even did it recently with Fire Emblem 1 for the 30th anniversary of Fire Emblem. They put that on the eShop, though that had a separate problem associated with it because it was a limited time thing. I don't know if that has anything to do with that, but that was pretty disappointing but if they handle more games like they did with fire emblem one and release them on the eShop rather than on nintendo switch online i feel like they could be making more profit from them while also making these games available to us in english so that is ideally what they should be doing at least for some of these larger titles like rpgs and things like, some of the smaller puzzle games, eh, like, I think Nintendo can add those to NSO while also translating them, because, like I said before, it wouldn't really require much effort, but for, for things like Mother 3, or some of the other, like, RPGs that haven't been translated, or things with, like, a significant amount of dialogue, that kind of makes a little more sense to have on the eShop rather than on Nintendo Switch Online, that would be the perfect compromise. Because, like, while they would be putting effort into translating them, they would probably make even more sales from these 
like than they would or like make even more of a profit than they would for having them on Nintendo Switch Online. But the other solution that I have is creating separate NSO apps with translated games on them, similar to like the 17 plus Nintendo 64 app, but these would all be available on the expansion pack as kind of like a premium thing. Like, and this would include like some of the NES and SNES games, but it would only be a premium because they would be translated. That kind of makes sense as well, but I'm not sure if they would go in that route. But I think there's multiple ways that they could approach this. So I just think it's weird that they're just straight up adding. I feel like they've been getting too comfortable. That's the thing. I feel like they're getting too comfortable with adding these untranslated games on here. Like, they started off with puzzle games, then they worked their way up to games that have, like, more dialogue in them, and they just, like, really don't care at this point. They're like, oh, they're okay with, like, the, the puzzle games. Now we're gonna add, like, even bigger games on here. But at this point, it's just kind of getting ridiculous, because there is no reason why they should be adding the Starfy games completely untranslated if they are on a premium service. But yeah, anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, and make sure to check out my Discord server and Twitter if you want to. Goodbye.